Well, it's a joy to be back with you. I haven't been here in a little while, and it's a special joy to see Father Girardi back in place. Let's welcome Father John back home, huh? You know, uh, several years ago, uh, Father John and the parish council and I started to have discussions about offering the sacrament of reconciliation more often here at the cathedral, and all of you have responded beautifully. We have confessors coming. Father John's made that a priority. And one of the priorities that we established was to look at our confessional space to see if it was really prayerful, sacred, inviting, and uh, befitted the actual sacrament of reconciliation. And so I think you will find these beautiful confessionals uh, which have been donated by some generous parishioners. Thank you very much to the donors. We have some beautiful space here now to celebrate the sacrament. Here in downtown Green Bay at St. Willibrard's, they have a uh, habit of offering the sacrament of confession at the Norbertine Parish very generously, and what a great gift that is. And now the cathedral will also show this same generosity in offering through Father John's time, but other confessors who come here, a special way that we can reconnect to Christ because we who are sinners often need to come to the throne of mercy. Now I say the throne of mercy because in our stained glass windows, you have two beautiful exemplifications of the sacrament of reconciliation right above the confessionals. On one side is the story of the prodigal son right above the confessional to your right. On the other side is Jesus giving to Peter the keys of binding and loosing. Now, I don't know if you know or not, but historically the church used to have their confessionals right back there. They've been at several places, I understand, in the church. But I wonder if this wasn't part of the original plan of our beautiful cathedral, that right under the window of the prodigal son and right under the window of the keys that we offer the sacrament of forgiveness and reconciliation. St. Benedict, when he declared the year of faith, said that the new evangelization begins in the confessional. The new evangelization begins in the confessional. Why would that be? Because the new evangelization depends upon the fire of the Holy Spirit taking a blaze in our hearts as Jesus described in the gospel passage today that he yearns to start a fire on the earth, which seems very upsetting at first, until you realize that he's talking about a spiritual fire, a fire of the mind and the heart, hungry to seek the truth and hungry to live an innocent, blameless life in service of the gospel. You know, one of those beautiful offerings that the Catholic Church gives is that we get freedom. We get freedom from the baggage of our sins by going to the confessional and kneeling at the throne of mercy through the ministry of the priest to kneel at the throne of the mercy to be forgiven. They did psychological tests on American people in the 1950s. And the most healthy demographic in those days were Catholics. They hardly ever went to see a psychiatrist or a psychologist because they didn't need to. They were the most healthy of all the demographic groups in the United States of America. Now, why would that be? The reason was because people were going frequently to the sacrament of confession and reconciliation. You see what happens when we sin, we cook keep putting rocks in the bag that we carry on our back and we walk through life burdened down like this. We don't realize it even. But with the sacrament of reconciliation, it's like that beautiful little pictograph I saw in the Good News for Modern Man a long time ago where a man is laden down with a big sack of sins on his back. He comes up to the Mount Calvary and he kneels at the foot of the cross 
and he leaves his sins there. That whole bag is left there in front of Jesus crucified. And in the next scene, it shows the stick figure walking away with his hands raised in joy and in freedom. The Catholic Church, even though people criticize us for being judgmental, non-forgiving, etc., is actually the most merciful organization on the face of the earth because we represent Jesus Christ. When Jesus gave to Peter the keys to loose on earth what is loosed in heaven and what you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, the sacrament of confession and those confessionals will be the place where your sins will be loosed and you will be set free. The only time a priest ever reserves giving the sacrament of absolution, if a person comes in there and manifests grave desire not to be repentant and sorrowful, or if a person comes in there and blasphemes against Christ or the sacrament. Of course, the priest won't grant absolution then. The proper disposition on the part of the penitent is not there. So then the priest has the power to bind on earth and what he binds on earth will be bound in heaven. That's almost never used. I've never used it in my priestly career, my vocation. I hope I never have to. Now I've asked people once or twice to go away and to examine their conscience and to come back again because they hadn't taken it seriously. That's once or twice in 34 years, that's not bad. So I try to be generous with the gift of mercy and I know all priests do. That's what it's for, that's the throne of mercy and grace. And you know it's funny when you let loose of your sins, of all those things you try to control and to have authority over and those struggles in life, the grace of the sacrament is an important grace because it frees us to live the Christian life. I remember one time in the seventh grade, I walked from home over to the confessional on Saturday after Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon at Sacred Heart Cathedral in Dodd City, Kansas, where we grew up. And, and I remember I'd made my first confession in about the fourth or fifth grade, I think. And I walked home and I had such a sense of freedom and joy after confessing my sins. I kept going frequently, but I never quite had that feeling. But every time today, even when I walk away from the sacrament of forgiveness and I'm absolved from my sins, I feel like I have a new, fresh start. I have a new opportunity to regain my lost innocence and to be ready to serve the Lord, a freer man, a freer priest, a freer bishop. And so, Life is about this journey of freeing ourselves of sin and self-absorption, of self-narcissism, really, and emptying ourselves for the sake of serving the kingdom of God. It is the beginning of the new evangelization, the time spent in the confessional, because it takes somebody like the prodigal to recognize that as low as he got, he finally realized I never had it so good as when I was with my father. And hopefully today, many, many people will come to that realization, I never had it so good as when I was practicing my faith and loving God and serving Christ. Maybe they'll begin to doubt all these messages of the world which promise all kinds of things that they never deliver on. They only deliver agony, depression, addiction, and all these other kinds of false promises. They lure you within to a shiny darkness, capture you, and never let you go, a free man or woman or boy or girl. Whereas Christ and the Father and the Holy Trinity, they always deliver on their promises. Jesus never orders anything he either hasn't or cannot pay for. He pays for it all, but we have to be like the prodigal and come to ask for forgiveness, to be reunited time and time again, to be more less of ourselves and to more of Christ. John the Baptist saw Jesus and as he walked away from him, he said, he is the one that he may increase and I may decrease. 
as we are shriven in the confessional, we grant the Lord permission to increase in our lives so that we will decrease and yield ourselves more to his divine and holy will. May God bless our parish and the Mother Church of this diocese by granting to her a confessional grace that this may be a church of mercy for people who ever come, that they may experience the mercy of Christ and walk away from this church free and re-engaged in the new evangelization. May Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.